Look, I know everyone on the internet is talking about this Godzilla Kong collab, but what we really need to be talking about is Godzilla minus one. Woo! Welcome to Movie World Plus, the place where we talk movies, plus whatever else I want to talk about in Hollywood. I'm Andy Signor, and today we are going to Japan to talk about the 37th film in the Godzilla franchise, the 33rd from Japan. Godzilla Minus One. This film is getting all the buzz. It opened this weekend here in the States. It's been open in Japan for about a month, and it's already doubled, more than doubled its own budget. It is proving how the Hollywood movie system is completely broken. Case in point, the Godzilla X Kong New Empire trailer dropped, and sure, I, I smiled. It looks silly. That's what this franchise has become. Silly. Watching Kong with an infinity gauntlet side by side with Godzilla as they go fight some bigger ape. I don't know what's going on. Uh, sure, I'll watch that dumb movie later. But what's not silly and dumb is Godzilla Minus One. This movie surprised the heck out of me. And honestly, I would tell you, if you haven't seen a lot about this or you haven't watched the trailer, go in blind. In fact, I'll tell you when to stop watching the review and to go see it. But if you like Godzilla movies, go see it. If you like war movies, if you like period movies, war movies, and you thought, wow, I want to see that with a monster in it, go see this movie. In fact, go in, lower your expectations, go enjoy yourself at the movies, and buy yourself a ticket, plus one yourself, to Godzilla minus one. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised like I was, because I went in with zero expectations. I saw a couple tweets out there, one from Sean Chandler Talks Movies, who I think is really good, always respect, and I saw him talking about how this was the best Godzilla movie he'd seen. And, uh, and then he told me the budget was only $15 million. I, I couldn't believe it. And I was like, "Real okay, interesting. This must be some piece that doesn't have all the action. Oh, it does. It delivers. In fact, I'm going to show you a little bit of pieces. So I, I do implore, if you have already feel sold and you liked this silly thing, but you really wish you could have a nice, a good, serious Godzilla 2, well, go check out Plus One right now. You can just hit the like button, leave a comment saying, all right, Andy, I checked out. I'm going to see it. And then you can tune out of the video because I'm going to show you a few more images and I'd rather people go in surprised like I was because I really do think, look, there's a thing about movies now where it's all just given away. I mean, it's been this way, obviously. Duh, Honest Trailers proved it. But they want to tell you everything, everything. And even smaller movies like this, there's something about not knowing like what's going to happen, how much of Godzilla is in this film. All those types of surprises do make a movie more investing and more interesting. And so I, I would highly encourage you just go into this one blind, enjoy yourself, Go watch a cool Godzilla movie. I'd be surprised. Where is it going to go? You didn't see scenes in a trailer. You're not waiting for that set piece. Go enjoy a movie, guys. It's really good once in a while, especially if you know it's good and you just heard it's good. Well, you got my seal of approval. Check this one out. Hopefully you have a fun time. Now, let's talk about the movie. For those of you who've seen it, etc. cetera, um, this movie, Godzilla Minus One, delivers on the action. And it's only $15 million, its budget. Now, granted, as I was talking, our, our OG uh, supporter, David March, reminded me, it's because it was shot in Japan. There's not the unions, the taxes, et cetera, the currency. That does obviously lower the rate, but still, still shockingly low number for the amount of stuff you're going to see on screen. And it just blew my mind. This movie was $15 million and it made $11 million here in the States. This is an international release. Japanese subtitles, $11 million for international release is very good. And I can only imagine it's going to have legs as people start talking about it, hyping it to their friends, et cetera. This film has already dub overly doubled its budget, um, made $34 million worldwide, so it's only gravy from here on out. Um, and, and limited marketing, too. So, I mean, I probably spent more in Japan, but limited marketing here. Now, you'd think, okay, Andy, wow, a $15 million budgeted Godzilla movie? This must just be my, more of a character piece, a period piece. And it is. It definitely is. But, oh, boy, does it deliver on the action as well. The, the set pieces, like... This, this feels like a practical Godzilla floating around in the water at times. There's definitely moments you can tell the CG, but still, it's so big and epic, and it's earned that it works. And the reason all these big budget action sequences work isn't just because they're cool. No, it's because we're invested in the characters. There's actually emotional stakes in this movie. The characters are... are uh, conflicted. The lead character here is a kamikaze pilot and starts the movie landing on an island with mechanics and they're checking his plane and he's a kamikaze pilot. He's not supposed to come back. But here he is, his plane's undamaged, he's landed and the mechanics are looking at him funny like, what do you do? What did you do? You're supposed to go do your mission and your mission is important because you're stopping, the, you know, trying to end this war. And um, 
right out the gate, you got a character who's conflicted and, and who really has something to say about war. Why would we make our soldiers do this? Why did we make our soldiers do this? We shouldn't have. The, the weight that he then suffers because of what he thinks is his fault throughout this film is really the crutch of this movie. So you have this movie set place in, is it 1945? Uh, towards the end of World War II. And it starts there with this uh, soldier who's just sort of lost and frustrated. And you're dealing with all the aspects of the war, which is wrapping up. But then, but then, Godzilla rears his uh, big roar and face and only complicates matters. And it really is an interesting twist on a war epic film. Honestly, this feels like it could have been Dunkirk or a million other war epics. Like it's, it's really well shot, vast. Like it's just, it's, it's impressive. They really use their budget wisely and you see the aftermath of this carnage of war, right? So imagine then you add a giant monster to it as well. It only creates more drama, more conflict, and you're rooting for these characters. He meets a woman um, who ends up sort of following him around uh, because she found a baby on the street that didn't was, wasn't going to survive. So you have these three people sort of combine and join together for the greater good of doing the right thing. Um, and uh, yeah, then you also got to deal with his inner demons from the war. Is Godzilla going to come back? All this stuff comes to play and delivers on a really just good emotional movie with social commentary about the state of war, about the history, about what we put our veterans through. And then you adds into it this, what happens if a giant monster shows up? And so you're actually rooting for your characters. You're invested by the story. You want to see where this is going to go. Uh, and I got to say, it didn't disappoint me. And I want to overhype this because I went in so low that I think that does the overhype. You're expecting the world. And I wasn't. I was just invested in enjoying the movies. But what I was so impressed by this film and the reason why I think this movie proves why Hollywood is broken is because they were able to do all of this on such a tight budget. Investing in a, a, a story we're invested in that's well thought out. Apparently, the filmmaker took three years to write it. Characters we're actually interested in and invested in Amazing. No, no stories these days feel like really they care about the characters as much as getting it to the next set piece, the big crazy CGI overdone uh, action finales. Nobody cares about that if we aren't invested in the storyline that takes us there. And I feel like so many, especially Marvel movies these days and a lot of big budget movies just rely on that. Okay, it's the finale. Producers and studios feel like we have to give you this big crazy thing. And sure, but what we really want is a a finalization of the story of the three character you know three act story structure of our character's journey. That's what it's always about, the hero's journey and the the payoff. That the best movies always have that the character has a payoff, not the fancy shit you know effects. No, that's not what makes a movie finale work. It's the investing in the investment of the character and where do they end up at the end? But so many of these big budget Hollywood movies rely over rely on CGI now and the effects that we lose it. And so what a, a relief to see a film deliver on the effects, deliver on the carnage, but also deliver on the story. Uh, that's something that surprised me here. I was invested in these characters and that's something I'm not always with these movies. But then to have all that on a $15 million movie that actually delivers and looks as good, in my opinion, as the $100 million ones in here in America... And it just goes to show you that it's totally possible. Now, I've seen a lot of people out there like, oh, it's so good, Twitterverse and Doomcocks of the world. It's great because it's not woke. No, <laughs> that's not why it's great. Uh, in fact, this movie, I would say, has a lot of social commentary, and it's a period film. So it's like focusing on that period. Uh, and it's not about woke or not woke. It's a movie that cares about its characters. And Godzilla is one of those characters. And you're invested in it because of that. It takes its time in making the story and it delivers on the action. And that's why this film is great. Uh, and sure, there's not like identity politics thrown in your face, but I, I don't have a problem with that either if it's done well. That's woke or not woke is not something I even really, I hate discussing it on this channel because I want to talk about the movie. The movie delivers because it's a strong story, it's strong characters, and it actually delivers on good action. And the fact that they did all this for $15 million is still shocking. So yes, I was scared, I was excited, I teared up at times, I laughed at a few times. Uh, it is a really well put together film. Godzilla Minus One, I was incredibly impressed. Bravo to all involved. Toho, you're 33 movies in and you still delivered a surprising friend. Now granted, 
I haven't seen them all, to be fair, but I'm curious if you have, where does this one stand? I hear Shin Godzilla is great. I should watch, probably rewatch that next. Uh, and sure, I love a good cheesy <laughs> moment too, but at the end of the day, I think you really want your Godzilla to be scary, real, effective. And I think if you go see Godzilla minus one, you'll be pleasantly surprised, entertained. Were you, did you see it? Did you hear about it? Has the buzz gotten to you? Cause it's really starting to get some serious buzz. It's why I bought a ticket last night. So thank you, Sean and others out there. I saw recommending this um, uh, Godzilla minus one, go get yourself a plus one, go enjoy your time at the movies, get some popcorn. It was so fun to be, and it was crowded. I saw it Sunday night and it was crowded. So I'm happy to see this doing well. We need more movies like this. Movies where the script and the filmmaker have a vision and they get time to develop that vision in the script. And then we go make it and the budget's not $200 million. So therefore there's not as much pressure and the studios give us more. I'd rather a studio do 10 bets on visionary filmmakers that they're gonna let do and hope one of them makes a hit enough that what a mil 100 million would be then keep putting all of our bets in Marvels and other hugely expensive uh, franchise IP remake sequels and try to build new IP. Because the truth is, yes, this is Godzilla. It's a very long standing 70th anniversary of Godzilla. I don't know if I mentioned that. 70 years of Godzilla. So of course it's relying on a big popular creature. But I do think if this had been anything else, it could have still worked. And that's what we need to figure out new stories, new characters, and letting these filmmakers shine by giving them uh, the resources to pull off Strong stories, stories first, first that help progress the characters and then all the action, everything else will be far more effective. So that's why I'm so pumped on this film. I hope you guys check it out. It's doing well out there. Let's get it to do even better. Godzilla minus one is now playing across, I think most of the globe, Japan and here in the States. Go give it a dollar or two at the theaters because it deserves. We need more movies like this one. We need to show Hollywood. You don't need to keep doing all these crazy big budget finales. What do you guys think? If you like the movie comments uh, that I give, the commentary, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell to Movie World Plus. Smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. Lots more movie commentary coming here. I do this channel for fun. I enjoy talking with you guys' movies, and I'm trying to do a weekly one where we go live. Would you guys like that? I think you would. Let me know down below. And should we bring back best week ever? I was talking to Vito. Oh my gosh, I'd love to do that for the Marvels. What do you think? Engage below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.